Skepticism is the realization of that of which Stoicism is merely the notion and is the actual experience of what freedom of thought is. It is in itself and essentially the negative and must so exhibit itself with the reflection of self-consciousness into the simple pure thought of itself independent existence or permanent determinateness has in conscience to that reflection uh, pros- uh, dropped as the matter of fact out of the infinitude of thought. In skepticism, the entire unessentiality and unsubstantiality of the other becomes a reality for consciousness. Thought becomes thinking which wholly annihilates the being of the world with its manifold determinateness and the negativity of the free self-consciousness becomes aware of attaining in these manifold forms which life assumes real negativity. It is clear from the foregoing that just as Stoicism answers to the notion of independent consciousness, which appeared as a relation of lordship and bondage, skepticism on its side corresponds to its realization to the negative attitude towards otherness, to desire and labor. But if desire and work could not carry out for self-consciousness the process of negation, This polemical attitude towards the manifold substantiality of things will, on the other hand, be successful because it turns against them as a free self-consciousness and one complete within itself beforehand, or expressed more definitely because it has inherent in itself sought or the principle of infinitude, where the independent elements in their distinction from one another are held to be merely vanishing quantities. The differences which in the pure thinking of self are only the abstraction of differences become here the whole of the differences, and every differentiated existence becomes a difference of self-consciousness. With this we get the get determined the action of skepticism in general, as also its mode and nature. It shows the dialectic movement which is sense certainty, perception, and understanding. It shows too the unessentiality of that which holds good in relation of master and servant, and which for abstract thought it passes as determinant. That relation involves, at the same time, a determinate situation in which there are found even moral laws as commands of the Sovereign Lord. The determinations in abstract thought, however, are scientific notions in which formal contentless thought expands itself, attaching the notion, as a matter of fact, in merely an external fashion to the existence and independence of it, and holding as valid only determinate notions, albeit they are still pure abstractions. Dialectic as a negative process taken immediately as it stands appears to consciousness in the first instance as something at the mercy of which it is and which does not exist through consciousness itself. Skepticism, on the other hand, this negative process is a moment of self-consciousness, which does not simply find its truth and its reality vanish without self-consciousness knowing how but rather which in the certainty of its own self-freedom itself makes this other, so claiming to be real, vanish. Self-consciousness here not only makes the objective as such to disappear before the negations of skepticism, but also its own function in relation to the object, where the object is held to be objective and made good. In essence, its function of perceiving as also its process of securing what is in danger of being lost, viz. sophistry and its self-constituted and self-established truths. By means of this self-conscious negation, self-consciousness procures for itself the certainty of its own freedom, brings about the experience of that freedom, and thereby raises it into truths. What vanishes is what is determinate, the difference which, no matter what its nature or whence it comes, sets up to be fixed and unchangeable. 
The difference has nothing permanent in it, and must vanish before thoughts, because to be differentiated just means not to have being in itself, but to have its essential nature solely in another. Thinking, however, is the insight into the character of which is differentiated, it is the negative function in its simple, ultimate form. Skeptical self-consciousness thus discovers in the flux and alternation of all that would stand secure in its presence, its own freedom, as given by and received from its own self. It is aware of being this of self-thinking sort and the unalterable and genuine certainty of itself. The certainty does not arise as a result of something extraneous and foreign which stole away inside its whole complex development, a result which would thus leave behind the process by which it came to be. Rather, the consciousness itself is thoroughgoing dialectical restlessness. This melee of presentations derived from sense and sort, whose difficulties collapse into oneness, and whose identity is similarly again resolved and dissolved, for this identity is a self-determinateness as contrasted with non-identity. This consciousness, however, as a matter of fact, instead of being a self-same consciousness, is here neither more nor less than an absolutely fortuitous embroglio, the giddy world of a perpetually self-creating disorder. This is what it takes itself to be, for itself maintains and produces this self-embelling uh, confusion. Hence, it even confesses the fact it, its own being an entirely fortuitous individual consciousness. A consciousness which is empirical, which is directed upon what admittedly has no reality for it, which obeys what in its regard has no essential being, which realizes and does what it knows to have no truth, but which it passes in this manner for an individual, isolated, contingent, in fact animal life, and a lost self-consciousness, and also, on the contrary, again turns itself into universal self-sameness. For it is the negativity of all singleness and all difference. From this self-identity, or rather within its very self, it falls back once more into that contingency and confusion. For this very self-directed process of negation has to do solely with what is single and individual, and is preoccupied with what is fortuitous. This form of consciousness is therefore the aimless fickleness and instability of going to and fro, hither and thither, from one extreme of self-same self-consciousness to the other contingent, confused, and confusing consciousness. It does not itself bring these two sorts of itself together. It finds its freedom at one time in the form of elevation above all the whirling complexity and all the contingency of mere existence, and again at another time likewise confesses to falling back upon what is unessential, and to being taken up with that. It lets the unessential content in its sort vanish, but in the very act is the consciousness of something unessential. It announces absolute disappearance, but the announcement is, and the consciousness is the evanescence expressly announced. It announces the nullity of seeing, hearing, and so on, yet itself sees and hears. It proclaims the nothingness of essential ethical principles, and makes these very truths the sinews of its own conduct. Its de the deeds and its words belie each other continually and itself too has the doubled contradictory consciousness of immutability and sameness, and of utter contingency and non-identity with itself. But it keeps asunder the pose of this contradiction within itself, and bears itself towards the contradiction as it does in its purely negative process in general. If sameness is shown to itself, it points out unlikeness, non-identity, and when the latter, which it has expressly mentioned the moment before, is held up to it, it passes on to indicate sameness and identity. It talks, in fact, its talk, in fact, is like a squabble among self-willed children, one whom says A when the other says B, and again B and when the other says A and who, though being in contradiction with themselves, procure the joy of remaining in contradiction with one another. 
In skepticism, consciousness gets in truth to know itself as a consciousness containing contradiction within itself. From the experience of this proceeds a new attitude which brings together the two sorts which skepticism holds apart. The want of intelligence which skepticism manifests regards itself is bound to vanish because uh, it is in fact one consciousness which possesses these two modes within it. This new attitude consequently is one which is aware of being the double consciousness of itself as self-liberating, unalterable, self-identical, and is utterly self-confounding, self-perverting. This new attitude is the consciousness of the contradiction within itself. In Stoicism, self-consciousness is the bare and simple freedom of itself. In Skepticism, it realizes itself, negates the other side of determinate existence, when so doing really doubles itself and is itself now duality. In this way, the duplication, which previously was divided between two individuals, the Lord and the Bondsman, is concentrated into one. Thus, we have here the dualizing of self-consciousness within itself, which lies essentially in the notion of mind, but the unity of the two elements is not yet present.